Bible says in verse number one, the Bible says, and he says, and again, now underscore and again, that's going to be very important to understand this text. And again, he entered into a caprinium after some days, and it was noise in the house, and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there were no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was bored of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And, that, and when they had, had broken it, they laid him down in the bed where the sick of the palsy laid. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy son forgiven thee. Spirit of the living God, just saturate this place. Take over this place. Take over this entire assembly of believers. Bust to use the word of God as a mirror help us not to see the man or the woman next to us but help us to take a soul search of our own life father we're not here to impress or to treat uh, to build up one another we're here to glorify god for you are so worthy of our of our edification and our glorification lord you have justified us you have set us apart and we thank you so, Father, use me as a sponge and try to absorb all the water that's on the countertop and then squeeze me out that there's nothing left. And I'll be very careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. And all of God's children said amen. This morning, I'd like to talk to you from the subject, when Jesus is in the house. When Jesus is in the house. When Jesus is in the house. One of the main reasons cults and gains have such impact on the world is their unity. Uh, uh, there's a gain member, a uh, gain member here. And he shared with me the reason he enjoyed classy being a part of the gain is because of the unity. How, how well together they were when one hurt the other one hurt when one was in trouble the other one was in trouble. He said there is much unity in the gain. Beloveds, though this misunderstood and misused, uh, uh, this kind of unity attracts people. I want you to know that many of us are fed up, are tired of this religious uncertainty. We are tired of this religious confusion. People are tired of fussing and fighting. Man, we fight on our jobs. We fight in our communities. We fight in our homes. When we come to church, we don't want to fight. We are tired of being told what you think. We want to know what God thinks. Man, we are tired. We are sick and tired of being beat up all the time. We want to be built up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I'm trying to tell you, many of us who have been members of the Church of Christ for any length of time, you know and I know that the church used to be the fastest growing institution in the world. But now it's at a standstill. The church is not moving like it once had. Why? It's not because of the gospel. For Paul still declares in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of, of God unto salvation. So the gospel still have power. Jesus said in John chapter 12 verse 32. He says if I be lifted up. I'll draw men unto. So we know it's not the gospel we know it's not Jesus then Glenn what is it well the real problem is unity ah, it's unity too much division over things that don't matter man I'm gonna tell you something they uh they asked me to preach at the uh, at the uh, citywide lectureship and they gave me the text unity in the church and they gave me 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. I know what they think. Surprise, surprise, surprise. 
So y'all pray with me. Come go with me too. But, but man, it's the lack of unity. Man, Satan doesn't care about us coming together. See, he want to keep us concerned. He want to he wanna concern us about things the way things used to be. Satan knows that, 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 man, if I could just keep you concerned about the church of your childhood, if I could just keep you concerned about disturbing the status quo, if I could keep you concerned about the way things used to be, then I can divide, I can split the church. Beloved, what we ought to be concerned about is glorifying God. I don't know one thing that's like it used to be. Now, now watch this, Yvonne, because the principle is the same, but the method is different. There was a time when you would come in an assembly like this, that would be a blackboard, and they would teach from the blackboard. But why? Because they wanted you to see the message on the board. We don't use boards no more. We use screens. The, 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 the message is the same, but the method is different. There was a time we used to pass out flyers. Why? Because we wanted the, whoever to know our announcements. Now we use email and Facebook. Watch this. Don't miss this. The method is different, but the message is the same. That was a time when we could take sermons and put them on cassettes. Now people are downloading them to their smartphone. Come on, y'all. What I'm trying to tell you, the message has not changed, but the method has changed. Beloved, I want you to know it's okay to change the method, not the doctrine. See, when we see methods changing, because it wasn't like it was when I was a little girl or when I was a little boy, then we get all worked up. But it's not about the method, it's about the message. Ah, let me go deeper. Cause, but, but we can't stop division. Joe, division has been around since the beginning of time. Cain and Abel was divided. Adam and uh, uh, Abram and Lot was divided. Sarah and Haggai was divided. David and Saul was divided. Are you hearing me? Stephen and the Jews was divided. Herod and James was divided. The Diocophes and John. Well, we're not going to stop division. Let me tell you, as children, we wrestle over rattles. We grow up, we fight over toys. We fight for positions on the football team and the Girl Scouts. We fight over positions on our job. We the PTA fight, the city fight, the nation fight. That's been division since the beginning of time. But let me tell you something, there ought to be harmony when we come, when Jesus is in the house, there ought to be some harmony. Let me tell you, man, I wish you can, I wish you can understand this. this this harmony should not be tolerated. I want you to know you can't be, have disharmony with me and have harmony with him. You can't have disharmony with me and have harmony with him. Man, you got to have harmony with, with him. You got to have harmony with yourself. You got to have harmony. That's, many of us don't even have harmony with ourselves. That's why we with Joe on Sunday and Bob on Monday. Well, this here, here, and this. Because we don't have no harmony. We don't have harmony with our own. You know the reason I can walk like this? Because both of my legs is in harmony. If one wanted to go this way and the other one wanted to go that way, I'd be in worlds of trouble but because of harmony are you seeing this satan realized that if i can keep this harmony in the church he don't care about us coming in here singing jesus is coming soon you can sing all the jesus you want to all i want to do is keep you divided let me tell you something if if confusion is in the house he's not here for the bible says in first corinthians chapter 14 verse 33 he's not the author of confusion. So if he can keep confusion in here, he's not here. If the wrong spirit is here, he's not here. For not the Bible says in 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they be of God. Many false prophets has gone. If, if, if the right spirit is not, if the wrong teaching is here, he's not here. For the Bible says in 2 John 9, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, have not the, he knows I can keep you divided if I can keep, if I can keep confusion, if I can keep the wrong spirit, or if I can keep the wrong teaching. 
He don't care. He don't, you can come together all you want, but I'm going to divide you. But let me tell you something. If Jesus in the, is in the house, there ought to be love. If Jesus is, you know what? You ought not be able to walk out of here knowing you got an issue with a brother or sister and don't make it right. You know, you ought not, you ought, you not, you ought not be able to go to dinner and sit down and talk about, so I better go over here. They looking funny over there. You ought not be able to go to Luby's or uh, 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 Papa Do's and sit up and talk about Edwin Bryan and I haven't went to him myself and talked to him like a man. If I got an issue with him, why do I have to talk to you behind your back? Isn't it sad that we call ourselves, a, a, you know, one of the things my mother used to do, bless her soul, my mother would make sure it was five of us. It was five of us, and, and we lost a daddy at a very early age. And my mother told me, she says, now, nah. she said, I don't care how mad you get at one another. All right. You bet not fight one another. We didn't fight. We, could, we couldn't fight one another. And I'd be wanting to tear my old sister head off. So, you know, but she knew I couldn't hit her because yeah. mother would kill me. And that's the way it ought to be up in here. We might get our blood pressure might go up. We might get ugly. Uh, you know what I mean? And all of this. But it ought not be no hidden below the belt. Man, if Jesus is in the house, there ought to be harmony. And are you hearing this? If Jesus is in the house, there ought to be unity in the house. Well, I wish you, oh my God, you ought to understand what I'm talking about. But let me show you the text. Uh, you know, we textual preachers around here. Let me put this text in its context before it becomes pretext. Do you mind? Watch the text because the text unfolds in the life of Jesus when he began his public ministry. He began his public ministry. He entered unto Capernaum and immediately began to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Now you got to walk with me. You can't nap on this one. You nap on this, you're going to get off track. Now notice now, Jesus entered into Capernaum and he preached the gospel of the kingdom. Let me let you see it. Go back to chapter 1, verse number 21. The Bible says, now remember I told you to underscore again, again in chapter 2. You got to keep that because it's going to make sense here in a minute. Look at, look at chapter 1, verse 22. The Bible says, and, and they went unto Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. I better drop this in. When Jesus was out of town, he went to church. Let me tell you something. Some of us going to be going out of town for the holidays. Find a church to worship at. Jesus went into Capernaum and went, the Bible says he went in the synagogue and he went to church. Now watch this now because verse 22 says, and, and they were a, a, a stunned. Now the word a stunned here, it was a word plesio in the Greek. It was a word which means it was a shock. It's like taking a blow to the head, you know. In other words, when Jesus went in the synagogue, he began to teach. They were, oh my God, because the text says he taught with authority and not as a scribe. Let me not assume you understand that. See, the scribes would teach. They were copiers of the law. They, had, they copied the law with the Pharisees and they quoted the law. They had no authority. They just copied what they told. Well, when Jesus walked into, wake up and get this, y'all. When Jesus walked into the synagogue, he talked with one of authority. Now watch this, man. Jesus is in the house teaching and watch what Satan does in verse 23. Knocks me out. And that was in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit and cried out saying, what? Let us alone. Are y'all seeing this? Jesus is in the synagogue teaching. This man's got an unclean spirit. He said, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Jesus of Nazareth. What blew my mind is he knew who he was. He knew it was Jesus and said, what do we have to do with thee? He reminds me of some of us. Some of us has an attitude of what we have to do with you, Jesus. Are you seeing this? Watch it. He said, now, what do we have to do with thee? Now, watch what he said. He says, are thou come to destroy us? Can you see something here? A blessing is right in front of this man, and he cannot eat it. Oh, man. It's right there. It's right in front of him, and he cannot see. Many of us are standing, and, 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 and some songwriter said, you're next in line for a blessing, and you cannot see it. Sometimes we throw the towel in too soon. Jesus was there. The man has an unclean spirit and Jesus was there and he wants to know what do we have to do with you? 
But watch what Je when Jesus is in the house, things change. Watch the text. Boy, this thing is beautiful. It's going to unfold. Look at verse 25. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold your peace. Oh, hold, hold on, man. I know you got an unclean spirit, but hold, are you saying this? He said, hold your peace. Oh, man. And when Jesus and the unclean spirit was torn him, he cried out with a loud voice and said, he came out! Now, I, I wish I had time to that, dissect the rest of this, but you know in verse 29, he healed Peter's mother-in-law. And then in verse 32, he healed all, men, all manner of diseases and, and those that was possessed with devils. But that was a serious problem. Come on, y'all, don't, don't, don't do me like this. That was a serious problem, Irving. His miracles eclipsed his message. Are you seeing this? His miracles eclipsed his message. People were flocking to him, not for what he had to say, but to see what he was going to do. Are you, are you walking with this? You just, just sit on the bus because it's going to come together in just a minute. Because that was, that, that's a problem, man. That's a big problem. Folk was coming. So to escape from this frenzy, Jesus and four of his disciples left Capernaum. They left. They got up and got out of Capernaum. And then they began a preaching tour throughout all of Galilee. Now, let me show you the tour real quick. I'm headed to the text. Just stay on the bus. Look at verse 28. The Bible says, let us go into the next town that I might preach there also. Watch this. For therefore came I forth. Here's what Jesus is saying. The reason I'm here is to preach. I'm not here to do the miracles. I'm here to preach the gospel. Are you seeing this? Watch this now because it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. The Bible says, and he preached in the synagogue throughout all of Galilee and cast out devils. Now, all of his preaching tour is about over and Jesus and his men returned to Capernaum. This town, Capernaum, was important to Jesus. It was there that his great healing power was displayed to the public. It was there when he preached with power. It was there in Capernaum when Jesus Christ told his, that he was going to be the Messiah. But that was a problem. That was a problem. The problem was they valued Jesus' message, his miracles, more than his message. You know, some of us value more what God can do for us than his message. Will you just stay on the bus? I want you to see that. Now, here's what I want you to see. And this took me a long time to get this. This is why I don't want you to sleep on this next point. It took me almost two days to figure this out. But I got it. I got it. God knows I got it. Look what he said. And again, he entered into Capernaum. Watch this. I told you to keep that in mind. He left, started his tour. He came back. And the Bible says, watch this. After some days. I was trying to figure out, Paula, what was the some days? What happened in the some days. Mm -hmm. Go up to verse number 40. Let me show you what happened. In some, now, how long the some days, the Bible does not say. But this is what he did in the some days. In verse 40, the Bible says what? And there came a leper to him. Now, in the some days, a leopard came unto him. Read. Beseeching him. Begging him. And kneeling down to him. Kneeling down to him. Oh, I wish we him. could under, his leopard understood his authority. Kneeling down to him. Read. If thou wilt. He said, now he didn't ask him if you can. He knew he can. He knew he could. He said, now, if you will. Thou canst make me clean. He said, I know you can make me clean. Are you seeing this? Watch this now. The Bible says, and Jesus would move with compassion. Put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, thou will be clean. Now, Jesus cleaned this man. I get this. I love this. Jesus cleaned this man and he charged him. He says, now, tell nobody. Don't you breathe a word what I've just done for you. And verse 45 tells us that he spread it the word even the more. Jesus told him, man, keep your mouth closed. But that man was so excited about what God had done for him until he went and told everybody. I wish y'all could see what's going on here. Let me tell you something. Number one, that boy was not supposed to be in, in society. He was a leopard. He should have been quarantined. And then if he was in society, he should have took a, a, a cloth, put it over his top and said, I'm clean, I'm clean. And then when Jesus healed him, he should have went and got his release from the priest. 
But when Jesus is in the house, impossible things become oh, impossible things become possible when Jesus is in the house. But, but, but watch this. This man was excited. Spencer, God told him, don't tell nobody. And the text says, he told, let me tell you something. We ought to be excited. You know what? Let me, this bothers me. Can, can I just be real? This bothers me about the church. God has delivered us from the power of darkness and sent us into this marvelous light. We ought to be, it ought to be something that happened to us when we walk through those doors. We ought to be excited. We ought to be excited. God has healed your marriage. You know y'all don't still supposed to be married the way you used to act 30 years ago. God has came in and healed your marriage. You ought to be excited. God has brought that wayless child back home. You ought to be excited. Look at you, you still ain't excited. I'm all in your neighborhood. He done heal your sick body. You ought to be, no, y'all not feeling me. Watch this, he done, he done given you a career. You ought to be, there ought to be some excitement when it comes in here. When we dot those, we ought to just walk in excited. Let me tell you something. Because that leopard was excited, people wanted to know what he knew. Let me ask you something. Oh, man. Who do, mm, you got to see this, man. We more excited about our new home than we are about Jesus. We more excited about that car, about our promotion on our job than we are about Jesus. Beloved Capriam had a problem. They valued the, the, the miracle more than the message. But look at verse 1. The Bible says that there was noise in the house where he was. Look, Jesus hadn't even done nothing, Ebony. He just showed up in the house, and there was some excitement. Yeah. Are you seeing this? Right. Okay, y'all not feeling me. Yeah. Yeah. You remember when you used to go see Frankie Beverly and Mays? Right. Come on, I get on you. Okay, for some of y'all, it was B.B. King and Bobby Bland. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? And you remember, you remember when the radio personality would come on and say, put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Frankie Beverly and Mays. And there was so much excitement, come on y'all, there was so much excitement in the house and they hadn't even sung one song. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why was they excited? Because Frankie was in the house. Jesus is in the house and nobody is excited. Are you seeing this? Man, the, the, the text says he just was in the house and they were excited. Man, it ought to be something when you walk. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I come in here. It's just something about, I don't think about praying reliant. I don't, I don't think about nothing but serving God. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, Somebody asked me at the door. They said, do you preach as hard at the first service yes, than you do at the second? Yes. I say, probably hard at the first one because I ain't tired at the first one. Yes, yes. I'd be a little tired at the second one. Yes. But let me tell you something, man, I'm excited. I'm excited about right. Jesus. Man, you ought to get excited. Excitement creates an a, a interest. Yes. Some of us... <sighs> watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Can you imagine coming here? The elders and deacons are here. The song leaders here. The preachers here. The urchers here. The members are here. Everybody showed up. But Jesus is not here. Can you imagine? You do know that there are hundreds of assembly right now. That he's not even there. Amen. Beloved, but because of the excitement of that leopard. Y'all yeah. mm. got to get this. This is the crucial part of the text. These are the hinges that the text swing on, Mary. Because that leopard was so excited and, and, and was told not to tell nobody. Man, I met a man, ain't you? Man, I met, I met Man, man, I have to, I, you know Jesus, man, you know Jesus. Because of that, Amen. because of that, 
because of his excitement, because of his witness. The house, let me ask you something. What about your witness? Do your witness draw people or drive people? Can I tell you something? Christ is with many of us, but he's not in. He's with us. He's with us, but he's not in us. And man, your testimony is so weak. Your testimony is so weak. Because you don't say anything. It's like you embarrassed. You know, everybody doesn't come out the closet. Homosexuals are out the closet. Lesbians are out. They used to hide. They don't hide no more. Everybody, I was listening to a rap song. He talking about, I smoke weed and drink. Said, dope heads is out the closet. <laughs> Smoking weed. I said, everybody's out the closet. But the Christian, we still, we still hiding. We don't want nobody to know. We, are, we go to pray at, at, at Papa Do. Lord, thank you for the food. We don't want nobody to know we serving God. We closet Christians. Are you hearing me? And that's why your testimony is so weak. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you single women something. Can I drop something in on you? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, I'm a man now. I can tell you this. I ain't telling you this as you preach. I'm telling you this as a man. If I walked in a restaurant and I saw pretty ladies sitting at the table and they bowed to pray before they eat, do you know that would mean something to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I walked in a place, now let me tell you, depending on what I'm looking for. Now, I'm just trying to be real. Can, 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 I, can I, let me try to smooth this out. I, I got to stay in the church with this. <laughs> if I'm looking for somebody to spend my life with, I want to see some qualities in this woman. Oh, you see me? I don't want to be able to look at her and see all the baby's breakfast. No, 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 no. Are you hearing me? I want to be able to see some qualities. I don't want her to be the loudest person at the... <laughs> Whoa! I'm trying to tell you. I want her to have a quiet spirit. I want her beauty to be on the inside. I want it to start here and flow. <laughs> I don't want it to be because she got twists or she got dreads or she got. I want her. I don't want it to be her costly array. I want it to be her spirit. I want to be able to say, now I can take this one home to mama. Are you hearing me? Some of them you can't take to mama. Uh, let me let me move on man let me move on you gotta see this look at verse 2 man look at verse 2 please don't miss this the Bible says and straightway many were gathered together in so much there was no room to receive them no not so much is about the door you gotta see it folks standing all on the wall people in the door people looking through the window there was no room just the house was packed yeah. now, I want to tell you something Anybody can pack a house. Yeah. Celebrities can pack a house. A preacher can pack a house. Uh, are, are you hearing me? A good concert could pack a house. But my question is, what do you do with the crowd that you pack? Let me show you what Jesus did. The text says that he preached the word. Jesus took his pack house and he preached the word of God. Let me tell you what he could have done. Jesus could have did one or two miracles and people would have been eaten out of his hand. Jesus could have took this opportunity to expand his popularity. Yeah. Jesus took this opportunity and he preached Oh, y'all not feeling this thing. You got to see this, man. You got to see this. Imagine now. Imagine now. Imagine the surprise. Imagine the surprise. All of these people has come to see what Jesus is about to do. They're looking through the window. They're sitting on the floor. They're all their backs against the wall. They're watching. They're watching with anticipation. And Jesus began to preach the word. Can I tell you something? 
Now Mark doesn't tell us much about his message, his lesson, but Luke does. In Luke chapter 4, verse number 16, Luke gives us Jesus' message. Can I show you this? Watch it. This thing is good to me, see. Look at his message. The Bible said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now you got to get this. He said, he, you see where he said the Spirit of the Lord? He says, I'm speaking by divine appointment. He says, I'm not doing this because I want to do this. I'm doing this because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then get this. He says, he have anointed me to preach to the poor. Now, Philip, I was wondering. I said, now, why did Jesus come to preach to the poor? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Prince, stop reading, man. No, 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 no. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let me show you why he had to preach to the poor. He's trying to get me farther. I want you to see, uh, isn't it interesting that the text says that he preached to the poor? Well, why did he preach to the poor? Because this is the way the Jews used to think. Come on, now read, friends. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He said, now if you listen to the word of the Lord thy God, read. To observe and to do all the To keep all of his commandments. Keep reading. I commanded thee this day. Read. That the Lord thy God, God will set thee on high. Now watch this. Here's children. why he had to come to the poor. Because they said, he said, the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Read. And all these blessings shall come. And thee. all these blessings shall come upon thee. Read. And overtake thee. And they're going to overtake. Boy, I like that. Oh, I wish I had five minutes. He says to overtake. He means all of these blessings was going to smother them. Read. Come on. And if thou shalt hearken unto the voice if of the Lord thy God. You listen to the Lord. Read. Blessed. Blessings. Shall be thou in the city. Read. And blessed shalt thou be in the field. Read. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Are y'all seeing this? He ground. says, if you listen to me and do my will, you're going to be blessed in your fruit. You're going to be blessed in your labor. You're going to be blessed in your, in, your, in your going. You're going to be blessed in your coming. So all these blessings was coming because the God had been on them. But now watch this. If you didn't obey, drop down to verse 15. Look what would happen to you. Read. But it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto, if the, you will Lord not hearken unto the Lord thy God, read. To observe, to do all the commandments and all the and Observe to do all the commandments and his statutes which I command thee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Read. That all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee. Read. And overtake thee. Read. Curse. Curse. Shalt thou be in the city. Curse. Curse shalt Read. thou be in the field. Curse. Curse shalt thou be in the basket. Let me show you something. Sword. Let me show you. Drop down to verse 30. Let me show you how bad it was going to be. Read. In verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. Uh, you go get a wife. And another man going to lie with her. So now, here's the mindset that these people had. They thought because they was poor, God was not coming to them. So Jesus says, I come to preach to the poor. I come, are you seeing this? He says, I've come to let you know that you have the right to. Are you seeing this? Man, the only thought, only only somebody who thought that they were saved was those who had money. So he says, I come to preach to the poor. Watch this. He says, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The brokenhearted was deeply affected by their sins. See, under the law, they had no chance, no, sin, no, no chance, see? Because you were stoned to death. He says, I come to let you know if you're brokenhearted, you can be saved. Look what he says. He says to preach deliverance to the captive. That was those that was in privilege. Restoring families to give liberty to the slaves and to release them to freedom. Watch this. To recover the sight to the blind and to sit at liberty the bruised. The bruised was those that were oppressed. Are you seeing his message, man? Y'all got to see this because in verse 19, he says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The illusion here is the year of Jubilee. Now, Jubilee, boy, if I had time, I'd go back to Leviticus chapter 25. So Leviticus 25 and 8. I want you to know what the year of Jubilee was. Jubilee was the 50th year. And let me tell you something. On the 50th year, the trumpet would blow and everything would be restored back. Hebrew slaves would be free. Watch this. Land was given back to the original owners. Are you seeing this? Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a year of freedom. Now watch what Jesus says. He says, I've come 
to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, he says, my sermon is about freedom. Oh, Lord, help me right here. Why is our sermon is about condemnation? Why don't we preach about freedom? Why don't we preach about John 1, 17? For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Why don't we preach about John 3, 17? For, for, for he sent his, word, his son into the world not to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Why don't we preach what Jesus preached? Why don't we preach in verse number 36? He that believeth on the son has everlasting life not shall get he has it now now you say so all i have to do is believe no sir that's not what i'm preaching you see the word believe the word believe was an anglo-saxon word it derived in 1611 the original word for the word believe was by lived if you turn the word around it explains it defines itself by lived or live he says, he that live by what he believed. You tell your wife you love her and all your actions show different. You're not living by what you're saying. Don't cut me off up in here. Man, I'm trying to get to the text. I ain't even made it to the text yet. Are you saying this? I'm trying to show you, man. If Jesus preached this, then why can't we preach this? Why can't we preach a message of freedom? Why can't, see, you know what, you know what, you know what, you know why we can't? Because we want to scare people. The Bible says, watch this, for the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching them. That's what, the grace is what teach us. Are y'all looking at me like it's not in there? Titus chapter 2, verse number 11. He said, for it appeared. Teaching us to deny ungodliness. You teach a man about the goodness, grace of God, you don't have to threaten him to give. You don't have to threaten him to love. You don't have to threaten him to do nothing because he realized what God did for him on the cross. We use that old scare tactic. You do this, you're going to hell. You're going to, don't come back at five o'clock, you sin, you sin, you sin, you sin. You're going to die. You, gonna... you teach a man. If you fall down, you get back up again because God's grace reach and get you. Are you seeing this? Man, this is in your Bible if you ain't tore it out. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We got to him. Lord, help me right here. I, I hate to move. Man, look, listen. Let me tell you something. We'll drive. I ain't trying to make fun of you, little Robert. But folk will drive 3,000 miles to go sing at a church two songs and then come back. But they won't go across the street to hear the word. You can get, you can get them to go sing. We can have a, we can have a, and I love singing. Doc, if I could sing like you, I would sing my sermons. I'm telling you, I, ooh, ooh, ooh. but I can't do it. I ain't gonna. But let me tell you something, let me tell you something. We will do whatever we can for some singing. Some singing, but we won't even, you know, man, he pleased too long. He pleased too long. You know, I'm telling you, no sooner than we say amen, people going to hit the door. We got to, I warn the security guard, stand by them doors. Don't you let nobody out of here. Because we don't want the word. Can I tell you what David said about the word? Listen to what David said. David said in Psalms 107 verse 20, he said, he said he sent his word. And that's what healed me. Are you seeing this? Not teaching, when we sing, what we're doing is we're teaching and admonishing. But when we are getting the word, can I drop this in while I'm in the neighborhood? Ooh, look at that time. That time like it's on steroids. My God. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me tell you something. See, the reason we struggle so much, you know, you got to have supernatural power to fight against the devil. You can't fight the devil with just natural power. He will tear your head off. You got to have supernatural power. And the only way you get supernatural power is through study and reading the word of God. Right. You know, we, we like to quote, uh, 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 no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It, and that's true. If you got supernatural power, it, you, it will prosper if you don't have supernatural power. 
For the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, for the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. He don't even know them because he is spiritually discerned. Reason why we so weak, y'all, because we don't have that soup. Do you not know? Do you not know? And God bless his soul. I think it was Friday, Thursday or Friday. A member of the Church of Christ drove on top of the bridge and jumped off. Did anybody see that on the news? Boy jumped off and killed himself. Remember at Holland Heights? Mm -hmm. huh? You know what? And God bless his soul. He didn't have supernatural power. No. Because nothing in the world could make you go and jump. I don't care what problem it is. You all have most strength than to go and jump off. Are you hearing me? Man, that's why we got to be empowered with the word of God. We've got to read the word. We've got to study the word. We've got to get it in our bones. That's what Jesus used when they took him to the wilderness. Jesus says, he, told, he, 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 he said, man, it is written. It is written. It is written. Man, when things happen to you, can you say it's written? Or do you have to say what Oprah said? Are you hearing me? Man, it is written. When persecution come up on you, you can, you can look and say, for as much as Christ suffered in the flesh, yeah. I will suffer also. So Satan, get on! Yeah. All right. You can look at and, and say, all that live godly shall suffer persecution. Satan, get on! But if you don't have that supernatural power when those things hit you in your face, you'll find yourself being pressed down, turning your back on God, running out on God because there's not enough in you to make you. I had praying folk up in here, man. Man, I know I'm preaching. We so weak, won't come to Bible class, won't come to Sunday school, won't read our Bibles. We'll try to listen at, at, at the quote of the day on 102. That ain't going to help you when your back get against the wall. So I don't mind sending them little, them little uh, email quotes. That, that stuff is good to read. You ain't got nothing else to do. But man, when my back is against the wall, I don't want to hear no quote. I want me some book. Let me get back to my lesson. How did I get off on it? Watch this, y'all. Please don't miss this. Ooh, this is the good part. Look at verse 3. Jesus now had preached this sermon. And, 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 and verse 3, the Bible says, And there came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was bored of four. Now, five times in this short uh, uh, passage of Scripture, the Bible says, sick of the palsy, sick of the palsy. Five times. Five times, sick of the parson. Now the word, we get the word paralytic. In other words, this man was loose on one side. This indicates that because of some malfunction in his brain, uh, in his spinal cord, that he had a nervous condition. Yeah. His nerves had, had collapsed. His, his nervous system was not working. Everything he did, he had to depend on somebody else. Somebody else had to bring him in. Somebody else had to pick him up and somebody else had to lead him. But don't miss this because that's a deep message. That's the way we get the cripple to the Christ. Amen. Somebody else need to care enough about us to sit up and bring the cripple to the Christ. Somebody else need to make their self available for the cripple. You know what? It's one thing to be physically paralyzed. But it's another thing to be spiritually paralyzed. And I'm afraid that too many of us sit even in the church and we are spiritually. I don't care what you say. I don't care how many scriptures you show me. That's the way I believe. Go right ahead. Man, I thank God for freedom. I thank God for where the, for, for where the spirit of the Lord is. That's freedom. That's free. Yeah, I might not. I might. But that's how we get the cripple to the Christ. Watch this. Oh, man. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that four men cared about this man. Mm -hmm. Now, if the man couldn't get to the church uh, while Jesus was preaching, that means that these men had to go to him. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. When they get to him, the man's crippled. Yeah. He can't do anything. So all four of these men had to cooperate with one another. The text suggests that he was on a bed, which means that there was a man there, there was a man there, there was a man here, 
there was a man there. And they picked up the bed. Now, I'm glad that the man in the back said, well, look, if I'm going to pack the bed, I got to be in the front. But I'm not going to pack this. I'm not going to. Those four men participated. And let me tell you, if three of them would have done their part and the other one wouldn't have done his part, it would have made it hard on the, come on, y'all. But all four participate, work together. Could you imagine the joy and the spirit that would be at this church if we all work together? It shouldn't be this group against that group. And I've been here for 20 years and you've been here for 10 years. And I, this is my seat. Some of our seat has our print. <laughs> Beloved. Watch this, watch this. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. I love this part. The Bible says in verse 4, and when he had come now unto the house, he couldn't get in for the press. Are y'all seeing this? Yeah, yeah. They're bringing a crippled man to the Christ and folk won't even get out the way. Can you see that, man? They're trying to get a man to Jesus. Hey, man, look, he's crippled. Can I get? No, no, I been. I was here. I got here 20 minutes before you did. No, 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 you can't get. So he couldn't get the cripple to the Christ because of the press. Beloved, some of the press here is stopping the cripple coming to the oh I wish I had my five minutes right here let me tell you something let me tell you something watch this watch this watch this watch this man you got to understand if we're going to get the cripple to the Christ some of us are going to have to move out of the way well better than you just don't know I've been teaching that Bible class for 21 years that's the problem that's the problem you've been preaching you've been teaching it for can, can I go just a little deeper? Who? Because I see something else in this. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Oh, man, I don't have to skip that. Watch this. Watch this. So, so verse 4, let's look at it again. Let's visit. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where, the, where he laid, and they broke it, woo, and let the bed down where the sick of the palsy was. Now, watch this. They tried to get in, mm -hmm. and it didn't work. Yeah. So the text says, watch this. They went on top of the roof. Now you can't miss this. In Palestine, houses was made with roof with clay. They were dirt roofs. Now what? So they take this man and they get there and the text says that they broke it. Don't miss this. In other words, they had to get some dirt. They had to get dirt on their hands. Well, if I had time, I'd take you back to chapter 1, verse 16. The Bible says, when Jesus walked to the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew mending their nets. He said, come ye after me, and I'll make you to become fishers of men. Now, he said you would become fishers of men. Can I ask you something? Mm. What do you do when you catch fish? See, the problem with the church is we're fishing for fillets. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Man, we got to, we, 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 we fishing in aquariums. You know what I mean? Let me tell you something. When we are fishing, we're going to get hard heads. We're going to get catfish. We're going to get some mullets. Are you hearing me? Man, everybody ain't going to live where you live and, and drive what you drive and smell what you smell. You're going to have, when you fishing, he said, he said, I'm going to make you to become fishers of men. But when you catch out, you got to clean them. Are you hearing me? And I, I, I want to drop this in. If you help a man when he's down, the average man, if you help him when he's down, when he get up, he'll never forget you. We talking about it in James, uh, James chapter 2. We want to take the one with the Henry Finkler suit and the Armani shoes and, 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 and bring, hey, come on, come on, brother, right here. Have this seat. And the one who don't look like you, we want to stick him in the car. Man, we'll be back there in a little bit. But at the bell, we take care of our people. Let me tell you something, that man in the back, might be the one that's filled with the Spirit. He has all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He has the best talent in the world, but you're catering to this crew, I mean, to this man up here. <laughs> Beloveds, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm let me, let me, oh man, I hate to let this text go. But, but, but I see something else in the text. I see something else, man. Mm -hmm. Look what I see. I see when plan A 
don't work. They went to plan B. Oh, you see, when they couldn't get in, Butler, because of the press, they say, we're not, now, you know, what would have happened? They say, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do, man. Uh, they won't let us in. We might well take this old joker back home. Uh, nobody wants him. Can't help him out. They can't get in. Can't get in. Just, I mean, we tried. We tried. We put up a good effort. That man would have remained crippled. But here's what they did. They said, brethren, we can't get in this way. I know it's steep, but I believe we can get him up that ladder. But that's vision. I like that man. Ooh, write that down. I'm going to use that the next time I preach it. They had vision. They could see beyond the surface. Some of us can, let me tell you something. We're in trouble because, they, in other words, some of us bring to the church a ground zero mindset. A ground zero mindset. We got, we got a ground zero mindset. See, we think smaller is better. We think, you know, well, well, I, I don't feel comfortable when I don't know everybody in the church because we think smaller is better. That's, a, that, that's no vision. That's a ground. We think sameness is better than variety. Oh, Brother Glenn, just please keep things the same. Please keep things the same. Let me tell you something. I want you to know, you know, we've never had a preacher's appreciation or we've never had a lady's retreat. Keep things the same because we think sameness is better than variety. We think peace is better than progress. Oh, I'm not advocating chaos, but I don't know a church that grow that don't have growing pains. Are you hearing me? Watch this. We think insiders is better than outside. We don't say this, but we do it because we've got a ground. We, we bought in the church a, 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 a mind of tradition. Give me just a few minutes, man. Can, can I tell you? Can I just tell you? Can I give you the difference between tradition and traditionalism? See, tradition is the living faith of the dead. Now, traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. See, it's traditionalism that gives tradition a bad name. Traditionalism does things and don't know why in the world they do it. There was a man around this time of the year decided to make dinner with his lovely wife. So they're standing in the kitchen and his wife's sitting there and she takes the ham and she cut the butt of the ham off and she throws it away. He looks and he says, honey, why did you throw that ham away like that? And she says, my mother did it. So he said, well, next time I'm around my law, I'm going to ask her. Well, they went over and he says, my law, baby and I was in the kitchen and we were uh, uh, cooking and she took the butt of the ham and she threw it away. He says, why did, she, why did she told me to ask you? Because that's what you did. And uh, she said, why did you do it? She said, well, that's what Big Mama did. He said, well, the next time I'm around Big Mama, I'm going to ask her. So he gets around Big Mama and he said, Big Mama, I was talking to Mother Law and I was talking to Baby and they cut the ham and they threw it away. And they said that you did it. Why did you do it? She said, Baby, my roasting pan was too small. <laughs> Let me tell you, people do what they do and don't know. You know what I really like? I like verse 5. Verse 5 say, and when he saw. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, man. You got to see this. He didn't see the condition of that man. He didn't see the crowd. The Bible says when he saw their faith. Man, when, Bill, when, when God look at you, what do he see? Yeah. Boy, come on now. What do he see? Yeah. When he look, now I know what he hear. Oh, I know what he hear, but my question is, well, I know what he see when your refrigerator is filled with filet mignon, and I know what he see, but what does he see when you What does he see when the doctor said there's nothing else I can do? What does he see when society say that this marriage has to split? What does he see? See, God don't move on condition. He moves on what he see. Man, if he moved on condition, there wouldn't be nobody under the pier elevated. Are you seeing this? If he moved on condition, the women's shelters could close down. He's not moving on what he see, on, on, what, uh, on, on your condition. He's moving on your faith. And too sad to say, the church has very little 
faith. We can't do nothing because our faith is so small. See, faith is the substance of things hopeful. If, if, if you can see it, it's not faith. The Bible says, and when he saw. Man, I got to let you go, but I'm not through with text, but I got to give you this. I got to give you this. I got to give you this. The text says that was one of them, a scribe sitting there. Get that verse, man. It said that was a scribe sitting there. Not, not, not that. What, what, what verse is that? Six. Come on. The Bible says, but there was a certain scribe, certain of the scribe sitting there. Now watch this, Philip. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. If he's sitting there and the house is full, that means he must have got there early in order to get a seat. Are you seeing this? Don't miss this, man. So this scribe went not to see, to see what was going on. So he's sitting there. The Bible says he was one that wouldn't move when they were trying to get the cripple to the Christ. So watch this. The text says he was sitting there. Read it. Read and it. Reasoning in their heart. Now he's thinking. He's thinking. He's thinking, man. He's sitting there. He's thinking, man. What, what? Read. Why does this man speak blasphemy? He said, now, this man is speaking blasphemy. Watch this. Read. Who can forgive sins but God only? See, 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 the Bible teaches in Leviticus that blasphemy was, 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 was a, a sin of capital punishment. So he's reasoning in his heart, oh, we got him now. We got him now. We got him now. Read. And immediately. And immediately. When Jesus perceived in his spirit uh -huh. that they so reasoned with themselves. Mm -hmm. Jesus he knew, he knew their thought. He knew their thought, mama. He said, now, after I saw their thought, here's what he did. Read. He said unto them, uh -huh. why reason ye these things in your heart? Uh -huh. Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee. Or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm give you two commandments, two statements, and three commandments, and we're done. The first thing he tells them, he says, thy sins be forgiven. The second statement, he says, take up thy bed and walk. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to see this. By him saying, thy sins being forgiven, nobody saw that but him. Mm -hmm. But when he said, take up thy bed and walk, are you seeing this? They knew he had to be the Messiah. Those was the two statements. But then he gives them three commands. He says, arise. Take up thy bed. Go to thy house. Can I tell you what that means? And I promise you I'm done. Arise means to move from wherever you are. Watch this. Take up thy bed means you start carrying what was carrying you. Yeah. And then the Bible says, go to thy house. It means get busy. Yeah. Can I tell you something? God has given us those same three commandments. Arise! Move from where you're at. Move out of that sin. Move out of that adultery. Move out of that hatred. Move out of that bitterness. Move out of that unbelief. Arise. And then take up that bed. What's been carrying you? You ought to carry it. But I thought he was kind of, I thought he was kind of cruel when he said, take up that bed. A man been laying on that bed for a long time. So why you want him to take it up? Two reasons. Number one, when you knew, you saw that bed under my arm. You said, Glenn, what's that? Man, let me tell you, I met a man named Jesus. He told me that. So number one, it gives me a reason to testify. And number two, it never lets me forget where I come from. Stand to your feet. Beloved, when Jesus is in the house, things are different. God is reaching out to you. He's telling you to let it go. Whatever it is, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. He's telling you that get back up. Get back into the, get back into the thing. Let's get busy. Not about your agenda, but about his agenda. Beloved, will you come to Jesus today? And can I tell you, you come to Jesus just as you are. 